Hi, I'm Scott Steinberg, and as you may have noticed, one of gaming's most exciting new trends is the option to enjoy your favorite titles anytime, anywhere, even the sunny seaside retreat. Digital distribution, the option to download games on demand to virtually any device, is rapidly transforming the business. But just what does it mean for today's players and game makers alike? To find out, we asked today's top experts. Digital distribution is just a way to say, hey, I don't have to get in my car and drive to Best Buy to buy physical anything. That's what our modern era is kind of really driven by, is like, I want it, I want it now. And every time that you don't have what you want, you might want to reconsider. You don't have to think about where you're going to go and find the product. You don't have to remember to go down to the store to buy the product. Um, if I look at my 15-year-old brother, he consumes things in a way that I never even ever considered when I was growing up. Digital's here. It's a choice for consumers. We're seeing a lot of consumption on digital. On PlayStation Network, we have 40 million users worldwide. So roughly 60% of our PS3 installed base. You can just look at the film industry and, and movies and television and music and see that that move away from spinning media and that move into being able to download it immediately, get it when you want, not have to go to a store and wait in line. Well, I think the business was always moving towards a services business. And so I think getting rid of the physical media was just a natural step. It's given game creators the opportunity to create shorter format games, yet the quality is really there. It's not just going to be casual games, it's not just going to be massively multiplayer online games, it's going to be all sorts of gaming experiences from the very casual to the most hardcore. Okay, so the digital revolution is coming, but when? Will anybody care? And what about the elephant in the room? Will video game retail ever go the way of the dinosaur? Most uh, players experience games from a disc. They go to a store and they buy a disc uh, and they take it home and they put it in their console or their PC and they start playing that way. Digital distribution is you know, basically doing away with the disc because the game is not on your computer. It's living you know, somewhere else in the cloud. So what you're doing is you're avoiding the necessity of going to a store to buy something but you're still having to experience the pain point of waiting however many hours or minutes or days that it takes to download that piece of content. I think the convenience is outweighed by, by some user experience hurdles that we still have to get through, but we're pretty convinced as well as everybody else in the marketplace that with technology continuing to advance, that, that'll only get better. I think that digital distribution will become the norm and will completely replace packaged products in about 20 years, and maybe 25. 22% of all households in the U.S. don't have cable or satellite. So if they don't have cable or satellite, they probably don't have high-speed internet and they're probably not about to download all their games. Digital distribution is very much in the early days right now. Um, I think we're at a point where you see all the threads are in place. You start to see people using it, you start to see the tools for people to use it, you see the billing systems in place, you see people being comfortable downloading. I think we will soon get to a point where there will be a tipping point where a lot more people will be comfortable, you'll see more types of content being made available digitally, and it'll become a bigger and a more important part um, of the business. Hmm, sounds promising, but we've already got Facebook, iTunes, virtual items, so what's the big deal? I couldn't help but wonder, how will the switch to digital actually impact game development and downloadable content or DLC like new missions and maps, will they really be a game changer? Digital distribution is one of those really exciting terms that's kind of appeared in the last few years. And the reason it's exciting for game makers is that it allows us to get content out to the gamers faster and more cheaply. Digital distribution, DLC, it opens a lot of doors. You can do a 99 cent thing. Imagine trying to do a 99 cent thing at retail. It doesn't work. You used to have a you know, big upfront cost to make a game and you'd package it all up and manufacture a bunch of units, pay a bunch of license fees, put it in the retail channel. And that's why digital distribution makes sense because your price point is a completely scalable um, a thing that works. And you're actually much better off if you get into the market and then react to what feedback you're getting from your customers. We have kind of a direct link between those of us who make the games and the people who are playing the games. It means that we can push content out based on what the gamer wants. It's very exciting for us to actually have distribution 
online, the entire online industry is currently more or less trying and testing a lot of things. We can serve gamers in markets that we never have before. Paraguay and you know Venezuela and Argentina and uh, you know little spot markets that in aggregate when come together actually form a meaningful number for us that we never could address with a retail product. The more direct that those uh, publishers and uh, developers can go uh, straight to the consumer, uh, the more money they get to keep in their pockets. Uh, that will help in turn allow them to reinvest it into, into better games. A better way to play? Maybe. But what about cloud computing? The ability to instantly stream any game over the internet right to your web browser. Is it really the future? And who's to say even if it works that it's got any game? <laughs> I am a huge believer in the concept of cloud computing, huge. Spinning media is eventually going to die. Everyone's gonna to want to be able to either download or play video games via cloud computing. But when we look at what people are doing out there relative to playing games, whether it be uh, on portable devices, whether it be on Facebook, whether it be in the living room through consoles, what we're seeing is an expansion of that market and an associated fragmentation of where the time and money is spent. Uh, but whereas before they may have spent a certain amount of time in our world playing console games, now those console players are even taking some of their time away from console play and engaging in gameplay elsewhere. One thing I'd really like to do is just to play a lot more games. And so the idea that the games are already running somewhere else and just with a single click I can tap in and experience that game is really what we're trying to achieve. So the concept of lowering the entry barrier to consumers for gamers to get into our games by not having to shell out for the hardware is a tremendous potential opportunity. The online distribution of games solves a massive, massive problem and that is the whole idea of recall, patches, and updates. So the key, the key things for the future of digital distribution are to be able to play any game, anytime, anywhere you are. To not have to pay for the game, you don't have to pay for it until you fall in love with it. Absolutely no friction to getting into the game, so you don't have to sit there and install and patches and all that stuff. To be able to share with your friends wherever they are, so one click and they join you in the game. And then finally, for the games to let you experience them before they are even launched. Cloud computing, I don't know where it is now. It has so much promise and probably because it promises to revolutionize everything is why I'm a little bit skeptical and somewhat hesitant of what the overall impact and effectiveness of the technology is going to be. The three questions I get asked the most, latency, is it, you know, is it possible to do this really, really fast? The answer is putting servers close to the users is, is the simple solution to this. Number two, can this technology work on really major titles? And the answer is it depends on the genre. If it's a, if it's a Street Fighter style game, then that is gonna be pushing latency to its limits. So that, those are not the games we're gonna start with. For games like World of Warcraft, no problem. The third issue, um, which we get asked a lot is, is this gonna be a large part of the industry? That's a good question. We've, we've put the price at free to try games, there's no friction to, to playing them and, um, and ultimately I think the interest in people playing games that haven't even been released yet is massive. Why do we need a thousand dollar and that's what these boxes uh, the consoles actually cost the manufacturers to make why do we need that computing power? Because the content can be given and content can be taken away uh, in a way that can't be um, there's no compromise in terms of security uh, that's great you could do a you could do that on whole games, say everyone can play the full game, no, no strings attached all weekend long, cloud computing, to get a taste for it. That's a much better demo than giving someone just the first few missions. Mobile, social, always connected, games on demand anytime, anywhere, that seems to be the promise digitally. Thank goodness, like many of you, I'd like to get on with this beautiful day. <laughs>